No, I don't waste no time Well, what's going on guys and welcome back to a new video for those of you that are new to the channel my name is joshua daniel george a digital marketing online coach i have my own social media marketing agency called brampaneer here in the netherlands and i also teach you guys on how to do the same so how to start your own agency how to get your first clients how to automate and scale your agency so that you too can live life on your own terms and now for no particular reason i decided to do a q a just to switch things up a bit i was getting a little bored of uh, sticking to my regular content schedule so i thought you know what let's just stick a little q a there in the middle just to switch things up freshen things up a bit so i asked uh, on my instagram and on my uh, in the facebook group um, if you guys could send me in some questions i even put in brackets you know try and stick to uh, regular questions as opposed to you know just purely smma questions however most of the questions that did come in were about social media marketing which i can't blame you guys obviously you know that is what you come to this channel for that is what you want to see so uh, like i said the majority of these questions are business related social media marketing related uh, even facebook ads related and there's a few little questions in between there that um were about me personally uh, which i you know enjoy seeing because um, you know, it gives me something else to talk about, uh, you know, as opposed to just social media marketing. So without further ado, I've got my laptop here. I don't think you can see that um, on the screen, but I've got my laptop here because I'm using my phone to record the audio. So uh, just using my laptop to look at the questions. And the first question is, what was you doing before you started SMMA? I like the way I said like don't have it SMA related. So the question is, what did you do before SMA? But um, so basically prior to SMA, I was still in university. Um, I did a, I've got my bachelor's in business at the Amsterdam University of Applied Sciences. And during the time that I was in my last year of uni, I uh, decided to start my very first um, basically online business, which was online coaching, uh, which was fitness related. Uh, the business was called JD Fitness. And it was one of them, there was no overhead costs. There was no investment needed. It was literally just uh, promote that I offer online coaching. And then, you know, if someone uh, takes my online coaching, it's profit. If no one does it, then there's, there's no loss or anything like that. But after I graduated from university, I realized that if I wanted to do this full time, I'd have to put a lot of efforts and time into it and to really build up the brand, etc. And I noticed that the people that I coach were not necessarily as motivated as I was because they were still being uh, brought down by societal norms, you know, uh, work, stress, lack of time, etc. So I decided there and then that maybe I should focus more on something that I do actually enjoy, which at the time was content creation. So I started my own content creation agency where I helped businesses with their social media management, uh, creating promotional videos, etc. And that is basically the foundation that was laid then there for uh, my own social media marketing agency because at the start of it, it was purely content based. I had almost a creative agency where I, like I said, you know, created promotional videos for businesses. I ran their social media pages, etc. And then obviously from there, I discovered that the world of Facebook advertising and then I became a sort of media buying agency um, instead of a purely social media management freelancer almost uh, agency so like I said that was how I started what I did before the agency because um, you know I am only 26 I've been doing social media marketing now for I think this is this is the the fourth ex official year and then prior to that I was obviously like you know trying to figure out how does it work how does how just start, etc. So uh, you know, four real years, I, I can say. So before that, I was obviously still a kid in uni, etc. So um, yeah, I think that pretty much sums it up. Um, there's another question from the same person. What did you do after school, college? Well, to be fair, I've just answered that. Um, you know, after um, university, I went straight into entrepreneurship. I took a, it was a gap year at first. That was like the, the decision. Take a gap year and then I was actually looking into doing a, a master's in entrepreneurship. And everyone I spoke to basically said to me, listen, you know, entrepreneurship is something that you can't learn. It's something that you just need to do and experience. And literally by failing and experiencing what it's like to have your own business, you will learn entrepreneurship over time. And that in combination with a book from Josh Kaufman called The Personal MBA, uh, those, that, that 
those two factors basically made me decide not to go back to uni and to actually pursue entrepreneurship full time and four years later, here we are. So uh, that was question number one. Question number two uh, was the exact message to send businesses. What should I write on the first message? Should I directly pitch my service or not? Please tell me any type of script for cold DM. And uh, to be fair, I'm, I understand why people ask me this because you know, I am constantly saying that cold outreach uh, in terms of email is my preferred method of outreach and that is basically also what I teach in Lifestyle Design Mastery. Uh, quick plug, there's actually now a Lifestyle Design Mastery 2.0. The entire course is revamped and re, you know, re republished basically um, and everything is about automation, scaling, streamlining the entire business and then like literally, you know, full on Facebook ads mastery. So if you find that interesting, if you're serious about it, then make sure you do pick that up uh, because you know, that is literally all you need to get started. I'm very proud of it. And I am 100% sure that as soon as you page that and you go through the modules and you take massive action, that success is guaranteed. But with that said, like I said, I focus very much on cold email outreach because that is for me the most effective way of doing it. But it's not necessarily a certain script that makes um, you know people sign up as a client. It's not necessarily the, the 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 flow that I choose. I've just picked something that works best for me. I've tested different types of emails over and over again to figure out what works best for me, what fits my personality, how can I position myself as an authority figure, but also provide massive value. Uh, in such a way that I show them what's possible, but not how they can go out to do it themselves. And as much as you guys message me saying, listen, what is the script? What is, you know, how to say it, what to do? Long story short, I don't pitch my service in email one. I provide value and ask them if they want a personalized video. That is how I do it. I send that out to about three to 500 uh, businesses a day using our automated systems. And then from there to those who reply, I will send a mini audit with a call to action to uh, hop on a quick call with me. That is how I do it. Like I said, in terms of all the scripts, etc., I leave all that in the Lifestyle Design Mastery 2.0 course. But at the end of the day, guys, it's just a matter of testing and experience for yourself what is the best method for you okay so moving on the next question is book recommendations for marketing and non-marketing if that makes you happy so in terms of marketing obviously the two go-to books are dotcom secrets and expert secrets both by russell brunson i've read a lot of marketing books and to be fair those are the two that stand out for me there are a lot of books that sort of complement those books you know there are a lot of books on mindset productivity um, habit building, high performance, etc. that I really, really like and have really, really helped me along the way. But like I said, like those are the two books that stand out for me. Those are the two books that are the first books I think of when uh, people ask me that question. So, you know, they do deserve a place in the top three, the top five for a reason. Russell Brunson's Dotcom Secrets and Expert Secrets. Um, you can get the free, well, they, it's, they say it's free, but you pay like 16 euros or dollars shipping. But uh, like I said, you know, you can get those books for fairly cheap through his funnel because that is basically how he gets you into his funnel. He provides massive, massive value on the front end and then you, you know he slowly gets you up his value ladder um so yeah like i said dotcom secrets and expert secrets by russell brunson next one if you lost it all and you had to start from zero what would you have done and what would you done what would you do differently okay so to be fair if i had to start over again now what would i do to build it back up again i'm guessing that's what the question is and to be fair when i started out i spent so much time develop or first of all figuring out how to build a website then when i knew how to build a website i spent ages developing the website perfecting the website creating a logo figuring out photoshop figuring out wordpress uh, figuring out facebook ads and to be fair now i'll just jump right in the trenches and just go for it you know provided that i've still got the knowledge but i've just lost everything and i needed to start again i would just jump right back into it jump right back into outreach because you know like i call it website syndrome where you're basically just constantly trying to perfect everything you know so it looks like you've got this really good um established professional agency but at the end of the day you know you can have the best website the best logo in the world but if you haven't got any clients you haven't really got a business so i would focus very much on the front end client outreach every single day and i would even offer free trials i don't even care anymore like if you want if you really want a business you you know it's even lawyers do it as well they do pro bono work 
you know, if you really want to get your name out there, then you will need to do something different than all these other people out there. And yes, all the gurus say, don't do free trials. Um, you know, do this, do that, uh, charge a thousand right away from minute one. And yes, you know, you are worth a thousand a month if you are char uh, offering Facebook ads, but that doesn't mean you have to start there, you know? If you don't wholeheartedly believe that you are worth a thousand a month, you are not gonna come across as um, basically convincing and they're gonna see right through you, especially, you know, these business owners that have been in and around. Okay, guys, so the memory card was full there, which is weird because the, the memory card isn't full, but after like 15 minutes, it just automatically says that the, the memory card's full. I need to delete like one video, one image, and then I've got like another hour's um, worth of space again. But anyway, uh, like I said, you know, if you are inexperienced and you don't believe it yourself that you're worth a thousand a month, then they are going to see that you're not really, you know, you're not really sure about what you're pitching and they can just sense that you're insecure about it all. So when starting out, you know, there's nothing wrong in offering a cheaper service or even a free trial if that's just what gets your foot in the door. And then from there, you'll build up that experience, you'll build up that confidence as well, and it'll be much, much easier to get higher ticket clients and, you know, basically charge them higher retainers for it. So next question, what's your motivation when things go wrong business-wise and in general? Uh, that's a very good question to be fair in terms of, because like things go wrong every single day. And I know that people like not only me like there's a lot of people out there that are um you know having an agency or you know that i've got a established business um you know it's on instagram on social media all you see is the highlights right you see us landing clients but you don't you, i don't think anyone ever really promotes losing clients or things that are going wrong and trust me guys like things go wrong on a daily basis things all like shit always hits the fan things go wrong you lose clients you get bad results but for some reason like that's just something that people aren't really interested in because people always want to look at the bright side of things you know the grass always looks green on the other side and everything you see is always just a highlight reel so um, that is actually a very good question you know what's actually do when things go wrong and i think you just need to figure out why you were doing this in the first place you know why are you why did you decide to go into entrepreneurship it's and um, more often than not it's not about like the fancy cars um you know a nice house or the money etc like there's something deep inside that knows that you deserve better than just the average nine to five so to be fair i feel like just i haven't even got a choice anymore because i don't want to go back to the nine to five i don't want to be in the rat race so what other choice do i have you know i just need to suck it up and continue you know working on the business and yes like i said you know you will lose clients in you know on, on the road uh, on your journey but you just need to know and understand that there's always another client out there and you know there's always it's always just around the corner so you'll notice that things will go bad and then you know you're back up again and you've got another client you get good results and you just need to understand that it's always going to be up and down up and down up and down and if you know that and you understand that it's all part of the process then it's you don't even think about what happens when things go wrong anymore so uh, yeah good question very good question uh, next question from David. What are your go-tos for improving Facebook ads performance and return on ad spend? So what I do in terms of my performance is I look at the entire flow and I look at where am I spending the most money? What is costing me the most money to get someone to purchase? So uh, this could be, for example, that um, your view content, your link clicks, um, your outbound click rate and all that, it's all good, it's all cheap. And then you need to spend an additional 20, $30 to get someone from add to cart to initiate checkout, then you know, okay, it's not necessarily the ads that are performing badly, it's that something on that web shop is making it difficult for people to purchase or people to go through the flow and won't go. So then you know, okay, I need to fix something on that web shop. So what I do within the business manager is restructure the entire business manager to, so that you can see what happens from, literally from the first link click all the way to purchase, and then you can see exactly at what point, at what stage in the flow, uh, you need to spend more money to actually get that person to purchase. And if you want to know more about that, I highly recommend you guys go to Aaron Kaiser's YouTube channel. Um, he's a good friend of mine. He's also based in the Netherlands, um, has his own social media agency as well. He focuses a lot on e-commerce and his content on Facebook ads is literally next level. So I highly recommend you guys check that out. But uh, yeah, like I said, that is how I do it. So the next question is, was it difficult for you to invest into real estate while Steven, still living at home? And again, another really, really good question. I'm actually happy you asked that because it's something different than the whole social media marketing uh, you know, side of things. A lot of people ask me about SMA and not about the real estate. And it's one of them, it's 
when I look at it from a logical point of view, it wasn't that difficult because when I purchased that property in the UK, um, I purchased that with buy to let in mind. So I'm going to rent that out as soon as it's, it's finished and it's going to be finished Q4 of 2020. Uh, bear in mind that I purchased that like so yeah, two, two and a half years ago almost. Um, and that was like the very first thing I purchased with my social media marketing winnings. Like literally the first thing, the first real thing I invested into as soon as the agency was at six figures and up and running was real estate. And uh, like I said, the reason why it was easy was because I know I'm going to earn more money because of that. It's an investment now, but as soon as I rent that out, that's just more money coming in and it's an extra income stream. As opposed to if I move out, I'm going to live there myself. So I'm going to pay the mortgage myself. If I rent a house, I'll pay the, the rent myself and it's more of an expense. And yes, eventually I will need to move out and I will need to basically have that as a liability. But the investment that I've made into real estate is an asset. And like I said, there'd just be an extra income stream. So in the short term, yeah, you know, it's it, it does suck that, you know, I'm still at home. But I know that in a few years time, it'll probably be the best decision I've ever made because the money that's coming in from the rent will cover the mortgage of that property and will possibly also cover the mortgage of the property that I'm going to purchase eventually. So, you know, it's like I said, it's just an extra income stream and, uh, you know, I'm very happy that I've made the decision. But obviously, you know, now I do need to suck it up until I actually um, get the property, rent it out and then get my own property and uh, move, move out uh, basically. So, yeah, good question again. Moving on, favorite YouTuber. Ooh, that's a tough one. See, with me, when I when I watch people on YouTube, basically I will discover a channel. I will binge watch every single video, and then that was it. I'll, I just won't keep up with like the new videos, anything like that. Um, I'll basically figure out that guy's or girl's story, watch the videos, watch like the most watched videos, uh, like the vibe. I'll literally just binge watch it for a while, and then I'll get bored of it and move on to the next one, and then. Every now and again, I'll have like this big clean out on YouTube where I literally just delete every single subscription that I've got and then just start all over again. And then I'll, I'll stick to like two or three people that are like the are like the mainstays, the people that I always watch. For example, Matt Diavella, um, a guy that I've literally watched ever since that minimalism documentary came out on Netflix. Really like his channel, really like the content that he puts out. There's this other guy um, I've found recently about dopamine detoxes. Um, I can't think of the name. I'll put it like below here. Um, he's got over 100k subscribers. Really interesting stuff. Highly recommend you guys check that out as well. Obviously, you've got like channels like Alex Becker. Again, channels that have been that have withstood the test of time and that I'll just watch consistently. But other than that, like, there's no real favourite. Um, you know, it's just it depends on what mood I'm in. And like I said, if I've done the big clear out, yes or no. And like I said, I just go through little phases where I'll binge watch one person and then I'll forget about that person or get bored of that person and move on to the next one. So uh, next question, where should you store cold leads when starting out and have no money for the CRM? Okay, I get I, I don't understand why people have this issue with CRM systems. Like literally you can get pipe drive for like 10 euros a month. You know, it's nothing like that. No, I don't understand why it's so, why people, like that, that's 30 cents a day, guys, come on. But, okay, fair enough, if you guys don't want to pay for a CRM system, just use Google Sheets, like it's that easy, just literally store name, email address. In fact, I've even got a video on this on my YouTube channel, so I'm not even going to go into too much details, just watch that video. So, moving on, how to pick your niche when starting out. Um, well, here's a basically a contradictory um, opinion. Don't pick a niche when you're starting out, just experience it, just Basically, if you want to get to six figures, you literally don't need a niche. You just need to take on as many clients as possible. When you want to go from six to, you know, like multiple six figures or seven figures, which I'm not yet at, you know, so obviously I can't really say much about that because you will need certain systems in place that I haven't experienced myself. So I don't feel comfortable speaking about that. But if you want to get to multiple six figures, then that is when you just need to start niching down and that is when you need to start basically duplicating existing funnels and systems that you've got for one client, duplicating that onto the next client, as opposed to um, you know having clients in all these different niches and industries because you will need to try and figure out how that industry works, how that niche works, what the, the lingo is in that industry, what to say and what not to say, etc. And like I said, just to get up to six figures, you don't need to have that knowledge because, uh, well, you do need to have that knowledge, but it's still sustainable to basically 
gain that knowledge as soon as you get the client. And then when you actually want to build a proper, proper business, you know, then you need to start looking into systems and uh, like I said, just duplicating the existing funnels. For example, if you've got one dentist, you get good results for that dentist, just duplicate that funnel and find more dentists and just use the same funnel over and over again with different logos. That's probably the easiest way to explain it. Um, let's see, how to get your first e-com clients. I'm not even gonna explain this guys because I already have a video. On, I've got two videos on this actually, so go and watch those videos. I have an eco client that wants to hit 10K a month within 40 days, is that possible? Depends on the store. How many, what kind of product is it? What's the price of the product? Is it genuinely a good product or is it a drop shipping store? What is the, what, what kind of data do they currently have? You know, there's too many variables to actually give an answer to that. Um, if it's an existing store, they've got good data, they're getting purchases now and it's literally just uh, a matter of scaling, then yes, yeah, definitely possible. If it's a new store with no experience, etc., then 100% not possible. Moving on, uh, is it necessary to have social media accounts for my social media marketing ANT? No, 100%, no. I, I, in fact, what I'll do, because people ask me this about the website as well, just create a simple Facebook page, add two, three articles onto it, maybe a social media, like a post, one or two posts, and that's it, just leave it at that. You don't need to spend hours and hours and uh, you know, posting content for yourself because clients don't care about it. They only care about where they're at now and where they wanna go, and if you are the person to get them from A to B, they, don't re they really don't care about your agency. Moving on, um, let's see. Do I need a Facebook business page to start my digital marketing agency? Just answered that. And then how important is a niche? So like I said, when you are scaling your business, it's very important. When you're just starting out, it's not, a, not that important. Play the field, experience other businesses, experience what it is to have a client that is not a right fit, experience what... Okay guys, and there we go again with the camera issues. So like I said, experience what it's like to have clients that aren't a right fit, experience what it's like to have clients that are far too big for you, experience what it's like to work with startups, and over time you'll realize what, client, what kind of clients you have that click with, what kind of client you enjoy working with, and what kind of clients you can get good results for, and then just pick that niche. Or if you notice that you get a second client of a client that you get good results for, then just tailor yourself to that niche. So again, with a dentist, if you've got a dentist client, you get good results for that client, you get another dentist client, then think to yourself, okay, it might be a good idea to just tailor everything towards dentists. So let's see, I think we're almost at the end of this Q&A. Um, next question, who was your first mentor? Ooh, to be fair, I haven't really, I've never really had an actual mentor. I've, I've always been the person who basically just, um, you, surrounds himself with like-minded people tries to because i wholeheartedly believe that it you know your network is your net worth and you are the average of the five people you surround yourself with um i'm you know like i said i'm an avid believer of that so i just try and surround myself with people that propel me forward people that you know inspire me to do more and be more and there's not like one specific person that um, has helped me achieve the things that i've achieved so you know, there's no one really in, in particular that I can mention. Obviously, a lot of books, a lot of, uh, like I said, people in the industry that have helped me, um, you know, especially when starting out, but I haven't really got a real mentor and especially not a first mentor. If I had to name anyone, it'll probably be my granddad because he was like one of the first like real entrepreneurs that I've ever got to, to know. And he's obviously the reason that uh, we are in the Netherlands in the first place, because he came over from Liverpool in the UK to the Netherlands to start his own recruitment agency. And um, if any of you guys have ever seen my origin story, I basically mentioned that, um, you know, he basically had like a life motto, which was, uh, we owe them nothing, which basically meant, you know, stand by what you believe in and don't let anyone else's belief or opinion stop you from doing what you want to do. So, you know, he lived life on his own terms and that was a very big inspiration for me um, to even start this channel and to pursue entrepreneurship in the first place. So, um, like I said, no real mentor, but if I had to pick someone, it'll probably be my granddad. So, uh, last two questions before we finish off. Do you think digital marketing is really for anyone of any age? Yes provided that you are willing to put in the work, provided that you understand that it's not a get rich quick scheme, provided that you understand that, you know, it, it is an actual business and it does take hustle. And as much as you see these gurus online portraying this get rich quick lifestyle, yes, it has its benefits. Yes, you will build up financial freedom, freedom of time and location freedom, but that does not mean that you do not need to put in the work. And if you are willing to put in the work, if you're willing to work hours and hours on end to get this up off the ground, 
then yes, regardless of your age, social media marketing is right for you. And then the last question before we finish off, and my laptop's nearly empty as well. What made you start digital marketing in the first place and what was your biggest obstacle? So as I already mentioned, um, I started out with my own online coaching business called JD Fitness. And um, basically, I really enjoyed the coaching aspect of it. I was trying to basically live life on my own terms myself. You know, I was trying to uh, break out of the nine to five, you know, not follow the norm, not follow, um, you know, what the establishment basically wants us to do, etc. And, you know, basically for me, the big jump was then starting an Instagram, which was fitness related, which for me at the time was a really big step. You know, I'm quite an introverted person. And in the Netherlands, not so much now, unless it's because my whole perception of all of this has changed. But um, especially when starting out, I was like, the people I was with, um, you know, basically the perception I got of people around me was that basically in the Netherlands, you have this saying, the biggest trees catch the most wind, most wind. And basically what I mean by that is that if you try and stand out, you know, people do not like that and people will throw shit at you for, for trying to do something different. And now, especially with YouTube, vlogging, uh, having your own Instagram, being an influencer, I don't consider myself an influencer, a uh, quick side note, but you know, that lifestyle and that like, it's become more normal now because a lot of people are doing it. But when back in like 2015, 2016, it was still weird and considered strange if you did that. So for me, that was a very big obstacle to overcome what people might initially think of me. And like, that was, yeah, probably mentally was probably the biggest obstacle. And then realizing that you actually need to put in the work and sales, cause like I said, I'm quite an introverted person. So for me, sales and actually going out there and talking to business owners was uh, quite an intimidating thing for me when starting out. And obviously over time, you, you know, it gets easier and you realize that it's not as scary as you one thought, especially with the business owners, you know, you're just talking to another human being. And worst case scenario, if you absolutely F it up, You've just talked to one person who you'll never ever speak to again. And that's basically how I go into these these meetings, you know, knowing that if it goes right, then great. You know, we will basically create a win-win situation by working together. If it goes wrong, I've just made an, made an acquaintance and worst case scenario is, is I leave him with free value. He leaves the meeting educated and I have not been to bridge or anything like that. And if I do make a fool out of myself on the call, I will never see that person again. So, you know, no, it doesn't really matter at the end of the day. And in terms of, like I said, you know, um, the biggest trees catch the most wind, it's all in your mind, to be fair. Like, it's like when people have, when, when you get a new haircut, the first two weeks people comment about your haircut, some people will love it, some people will hate it, but after two weeks, everyone's used to you having that haircut and things just go back to normal again. And the same goes for entrepreneurship, you know, if you start an online business, if you start a YouTube channel, if you start a personal brand, the first two weeks are probably gonna be the hardest two weeks uh, ever and then after that things go back to normal again and people are just used to it used to you being that person who you then become okay so that is all i've got for today i think that was the last question apologies if i've missed your question um i basically as soon as i published this on uh, facebook and instagram i just copied and pasted all of the messages that i got right away into my notes and then from there like i said if i have missed your message apologies i'll save it for the next q a hope you enjoyed this video hope you got some out of it if you did please leave this video with a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more and i'll see you all in the next video